Welcome to Trinity. Thanks for being with us this morning. We're so excited to have another morning to worship together, whether you are joining us in person or online. God is good. We just have a few announcements this morning. Uh, we want to uh, invite students to join us for our Trinity Students Ministry on Wednesday nights. It's for sixth grade through 12th grade. And we are meeting here in person at the Family Life Center. We're uh, practicing uh, social distancing and wearing masks. So it's safe to come and join us. Uh, come at six o'clock for food and fun and games and with our ministry starting at 645. Uh, for worship and small groups. So don't miss out on that. Um, we also uh, want to just thank you so much for your generosity and giving. You can continue to give online at our Church Center app or on our website or in person. But um, your giving uh, helps us to continue our mission to connecting people to Christ. Good morning. Trinity Kids is having a drive through block party this morning from 1015 to 1130 in the Family Life Center parking lot. We'd love to have all of our Trinity Kids families and friends, invite your friends, everyone's invited. We'll have you drive through the balloon arch and then make a couple of stops along the way to pick up some fun things, crafts and treats and all sorts of good stuff. So we hope to see you there. Take care. So whether you are joining for the first time here at Trinity or you call Trinity your home church, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, whether you are just beginning to explore a relationship with Jesus or you are a longtime follower of Christ. We just um, welcome you here. Um, we are going to start with a few songs and we will have um, an encouraging message that will um, have practical life application. So thank you for joining us. We're so glad that you're here. Welcome to worship. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us for online worship today at Trinity Church in Papillion. It's such a pleasure to be with you. Let's sing together. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a My weapon is a melody. 
Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as The crimson stain he washed in white as During these times of COVID, when we have been spending more time at home and less time running around, there are many people who have explored and been hungry for an opportunity to build something at home different than what they had built before. A deeper experience, a broader experience of family or household, an opportunity to become more of who God has called them to be in Jesus Christ. Today we begin a new series, Oikonomics, that addresses that opportunity. As we begin this new series, would you join me in a moment of prayer? Heavenly and gracious God, your word in the Bible gives us instructive, helpful insights for the living of each and every day. We pray, Lord, that we would draw from your scriptures a system, an understanding, a way of economics where we can grow not just thinking about financial things, but the parts of life that are of substance, our spirituality, our relationships with you and with one another, our intellectual engagement with you. We pray, Lord, that you would grow, build, and develop us as we explore economics. Teach us in this time, for we ask this in Christ. Amen. 
this series begins with an opportunity to build two things. One is a toolkit. When I look at my family, and we all look at the reality of family, we recognize that navigating through different parts of family life, from the moments when we just begin our family, when we have children, when our family's extended, our engagement with our aging parents at times or other relatives requires a whole toolkit of resources to deal with the many unique and divergent situations that arise. In this series, we're going to approach what some tools might be in building a household economy. And we're going to look at it from the term investing, from the concept of investing. And as we talk about investing, I want you to let go from your mind the constant thought of finances. You can't turn on the news without seeing something about the economy and the stock market. And all of those that focus towards investment make us think of financial assets. But there are assets we have that I believe are far greater, stronger, and broader than our finances. And so we're going to look at some additional tools to put into your household family toolkit to help invest and grow what God is calling you to be. The word oikonomics is a conflated word where we put different words together. And the first is oikos. Oikos in Greek means household, and it is an extended household. Today, when we think of household, we often think of the people that live within our home. Maybe us as a single person or husband and wife or husband and wife and children. Often it extends husband, wife, children, parent, relative, friend. In the ancient world, household included those people with whom you were in regular relationship. It didn't necessarily have to involve just biology, but would extend into relationship, including even the servants or the slaves in the household of wealthy people. And so when we hear that word oikos, it is household. Economics is the branch of knowledge concerned with the production, consumption, and transfer of wealth. And please keep in your mind, not all wealth is financial or physical assets. And when you put these together, you get a faith-filled household economic to build a Christian life and home. And this and the next four weeks, we are going to focus on building that Christian life and home, starting with some foundations, key foundations for this particular series. And the first is an understanding that we have an emptiness inside to be filled. Most of us at some point, if not all points of our life, in some area of our life, we're searching. We're searching for something more, something that's deeper, something that is broader, that there are elements or parts of our lives that seem incomplete, and we want to bring a wholeness and completeness to those areas. Another way of saying that and expanding on it is we want to grow, and we could all use growth, and as we look at the five different types of capital we have, we would like to grow all of these so that our life continues on an upward trend, becoming more of who God has called us to be. As it is true in all kinds of areas of uh, economics, growth in one capital requires investment from other capitals. And so if you want to grow your retirement, you have to grow your savings and you have to grow your investment ability. And so that is true in the other areas of capital. And I want to make it clear that the application of what we are teaching in these five weeks um, is not just located with the personal or the individual. It extends into the nuclear family or the family that is in your home and into the household, those that you include and consider family, and yes, even into the expanse of the church. Now, I've referenced uh, five capitals. And so I want to walk through what five capitals we are going to talk about. The first is financial, and that's the one we typically go to. It's about dollars and cents, money and wealth. As we start going a little bit deeper, there's intellectual capital. 
Intellectual capital has the currency of creativity and knowledge. It is about what we take in and absorb and understand in our minds and in our hearts and the creative use of that for the benefit of ourself and for others. It is that mind part of us that engages with the richness and the fullness of God. The next capital is physical capital. We all have a certain amount of time available to us and a certain amount of energy. And if we are going to expand in capitals and um, we need to invest our time and our energy, and sometimes investing the other capitals helps us expand our time and our energy. Relational. Relational capital is about relationships or connections with people. Some have relationships with this group of people or this person, others with other groups of people, other people. Depths of relationship vary and relationships are a capital that we can use. And finally, the approach we're going to take today is spiritual. Spiritual is about wisdom and power. Wisdom and power come from a deeper and deepening relationship with Jesus Christ. So as we begin this series, we're going to begin with the end in mind. I believe that spiritual capital is the deepest and most important capital that we can and should grow. It is for the depth of spiritual capital and the growth of spiritual capital that the other four capitals are available for us to invest, that our spiritual capital, along with the others, can continue to grow and increase throughout our lives. And so I want to start today with the spiritual capital. So as we hear of the other capitals in the succeeding weeks, we are able to look at them in terms of how we can invest financially, intellectually, relationally with our opportunity to grow our spiritual capital. So we're going to begin with the end in mind. Spiritual capital is about the depth of our relationship with God as a disciple of Jesus Christ. The depth of our relationship with God gives us a spiritual capital that we can invest in others. Where is that level of connection that you would enjoy and engage in with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? What trust? What faith? What acceptance? And then how does this issue forth in your life? Are you living your faith each and every day? Are you engaged in practicing what you believe from your experience with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Is your spiritual capital a healthy balance of that depth and practice of your faith? We've talked in the last weeks as we have binged the Bible about faith without works is dead or um, be, also, be doers of the word as well as hearers of the word. And so we're going to look today a little bit at what it means to balance and to allow what comes into your heart through your relationship, your spiritual connection with Jesus Christ to issue forth in action. The text I want to use to delve into this topic is Mark 1, 14 and 15. And I use this because this is where Jesus began his ministry with us. And I believe that it is a basic, a foundation for our spiritual connection to God. Jesus is beginning his public ministry. This is the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. It is um, when Jesus begins reaching out into the world with the good news of God revealed in him. We read, after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Therein is our call to spirituality. Repent and believe. Now, repentance is defined in many ways repentance is most often an understanding of change where we turn around to face God. Our nature as people is to turn our back on God and walk our own way follow our, following our own direction. Repentance is 
turning around, facing God, following God. Repentance is changing those behaviors, thoughts, actions that lead us away from God and allowing them to turn around so that we can engage and embrace God. That process of engaging and embracing God is believing. It's a process of growing in faith, acceptance and understanding of the depth of God's love for you. When we have read from John's uh, first letter, 1 John, God is love. His very nature is love. His being is love. God is the embodiment in every way of love. How is it that we are experiencing and believing that love that God has our best interest at heart at all moments. It is hard to look at our world right now. Our world, as I shared last Sunday, is burning. I mean, it's literally burning in California and Colorado and some other places around our world where fires are out of control. It's burning with a pandemic. It's burning with riots. It is burning with destruction. It is burning with conflict between people. How can God let this happen? Believing is trusting that God has our best interest at heart. Believing is trusting that God has a plan for us. Believing is trusting that the next step, the next opportunity, the next journey, God has that already in his hand and is leading us into a future with the primary goal of connecting us to him as our Lord and Savior, that we might spend eternity with him in heaven. As we look at the development of this ongoing process of repent and believe, because it is a process, every time I read the scripture, I find something new that I haven't seen before, and it causes me to evaluate how my life aligns with what I just understood, and it causes a moment of repentance and an opportunity to believe. How do we go through this process of repent and believe? And I think Jesus speaks of this very clearly at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is located in the Gospel of Matthew. It begins in the fifth chapter and extends through the end of the seventh chapter, and we're going to read the end of the seventh chapter as a reflection on how Jesus sends this message, this sermon, out into the world. So if you want to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24, I'm going to read this from the New International Version. After the Sermon on the Mount is preached, he says this, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Jesus, as John tells us in his gospel, was the word who became flesh and lived among us. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. God became flesh, lived among us. Jesus as we confess in the Nicene Creed, was true God and true man. And he comes to us and he says, you who hear these words of mine and puts them into practice, hears, believes, and does, um, is like a wise man who built his house on rock. And so as we look at what it means to deepen and how we might de deepen our spiritual connection with God, I wanna take some of the words that he shares in this story and look at them in a greater depth. And so look at these phrases with me. First, here's these words of mine. Our connection to God spiritually grows through his word. 
In Hebrews, it says, faith comes by what is heard, and what is heard comes through the preaching of Christ. So if you're hearing these words today, you've already taken a major step in this process. You're hearing the preaching of Christ. And I think for our purposes, hearing goes further and goes broader. Hearing includes studying in the scripture. It means opening these words, these chapters, these books of the Bible, and listening to what the Holy Spirit is speaking into our hearts through these words. These are not just words on a page. These are the revelation and inspiration of God through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit into your heart for you to connect with God. One way of speaking of the scriptures, it is the story of God's love for you from the beginning of time until time is no more. What is it that you read in these scriptures that teach you of God's abundant love for you? What is it that you read of forgiveness? The unburdening of guilt when you confess your sin and the promise of Jesus comes into your heart and you are forgiven. Removing the barrier between you and God, which brings you closer to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It starts with hearing these words, studying, praying through the words, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart through the message, through the Bible, through Bible study, through reading it aloud, reading it to another person, listening to another person read it to you. Whoever hears these words of mine, and then secondly, puts them into practice. Faith without works is dead. Be ye not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. What we learn, encounter, experience in the Bible is not all for our head. It's not all for our heart. It is to come into us and go out for the sake of others. It is to be put into our lives, incorporated into our everyday process. It's not just something that's to bounce off or from which we cherry pick. We all have to admit there are parts of the scripture we like better than others. There are instructions that we think are more important for other people to listen to than for us to listen to. Jesus is saying in this sermon and in the words of the scripture, I want you to understand that this isn't just nice stuff to listen to and say, what nice words. Put them into practice. Do something with them. Learn and allow that to guide and mold your life. The wise man then built his house on rock. I want to speak about the rock in two different ways. One is that as you go through the Sermon on the Mount, I'm going to page through the Sermon on the Mount and just read a few of the topics that are approached by Jesus. We're to be salt and light, flavoring and enlightenment for the world, that we shouldn't murder, but actually, in an expansion of what it says in the commandment, we should help one another in physical needs, that we shouldn't just not commit adultery, but we should treat one another with the respect and honor due and not allow our minds to take us to other places that might be inappropriate, that um, we shouldn't take oaths, that we should love our enemies, pray for those who persecute us, give to those in need, engage with God in heartfelt and deep prayer, to store up for God and for ourselves treasures in heaven, not here on earth. What's here on earth is gone when we go from this life into the next. What we store up in our relationship with Jesus Christ is eternal. Don't worry. Trust God. He's got this. 
Don't judge others. We're all broken. We're all sinners. But to engage each other in the challenge of becoming more of who God has called us to be. To remember that God stands ready for us. Ask, seek, and knock. God's ready to answer the door. And he talks about, finally, these wise and foolish builders. So build your house on the rock. I think another interpretation of rock is that in the Old Testament, one of the names often associated or attributed to God is rock. The psalmist speaks of our rock and our redeemer. Peter is renamed from Simon to Peter. Greek word for Peter is Petros. Petros is little rock almost a chip off the old block. The little rock, Jesus, God is the big rock. Peter, the leader of the disciples, the little rock. Build this house on the word of God, the rock, and on God, your relationship with God. And then finally, because of this, the house didn't fall because the foundation is on the rock. Life today has its tenuous moments. We can all look around in our own homes and then further into our extended families and finally into families we are aware of we've never met, but we may see on the news or hear about in, the con in a conversation. And we recognize that storms are destroying families every day. Individuals, families, households, even churches, building the foundation on the rock, the firm foundation of God's word and instruction to us, and God himself will allow it, the household, to stand, the oikos, to remain firm. The Bible includes instructions for repairs, confession of forgiveness, Encouragement, hope, strength. I want to share one group in our church that I'm aware lives this out in a way we can look at clearly and understand, and that is our authentic men's group. And if you look at this graphic, it also represents our strategy as a congregation, which is to love God, grow community, and serve others. They are studying the word, putting it into practice, and sharing it with others. They are hearers and doers. And so let's look at this. In this upper right, there are all those little boxes, obviously a Zoom conference, and that's all I could fit on the screen. There were more of them there. But this group gathers together, studies God's word together. They challenge one another with the word. They debate the word. They dig in and try to understand the word. They are hearers of the word. And if you look at those pictures, you recognize those people because you see them in worship. They're hearing the word of God. They're loving God, growing with him. As we go clockwise and go right below, that is the men's group out um, shooting trap together, building community, spending time, being in their own way an oikos, a household of brothers in the faith, living together, growing together, having fun together. And then in the panel on your left, they are serving. They're working together for the benefit of someone else. They have listened to the word, built their life together on solid foundation, and enjoyed the bounty of practicing the word and the relationships that it has built for them, allowing each one of them to grow in wisdom and power. And wisdom and power are the evidence of spiritual capital. Power not being some mystical, magical power, but the power of confidence and a powerful faith in God, trusting 
building your life, being willing to sacrifice and build your life on and for God. Wisdom and power are the evidence of spiritual capital. And we can spend them to grow other capitals and help others grow their lives in Christ. When we have wisdom and power, we can use that to help grow the other capitals. For example, if you want to grow relational capital, you can invest some of what you understand in wisdom and the power of God in your life. Share that with another person, which can and will build that relationship with the other person. If you want to grow intellectual capital, knowledge, you invest some of your wisdom into interpretation of the scripture, and that will deepen your intellectual capacity and understanding of who God is for your life. Wisdom, power, spiritual capital are gifts that you can share with others and fulfill our mission as a congregation. And hopefully your mission as a disciple of Jesus Christ, our mission, which is connecting people to Christ. This week, I pray that you make use of the study guide that is available Understand at a deeper level your spiritual connection with God and grow your spiritual capital. Spend some time reading the Bible, praying. Spend some time with God. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you are a God with a heart for your children. You are a God who loves us with a complexity that we cannot begin to apprehend. You are a God who wants us to grow close. And it's not all up to us because you meet us wherever we are and you send into our lives, fill us with the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Where spirit touches spirit and our spiritual relationship with you gets deeper, more intimate, continuing to grow. Give us a hunger for your sake. Give us a desire to spend our finances on resources to help us find materials to draw us closer to you, taking our physical capital and spending time with you so that we can grow, to applying our intellectual abilities to understanding the complexities of the Bible so that we can glean from these pages more and more to grow closer to you day by day. Help us see in the world, Lord, not just the fire, but the faith, the evidence of your work in the world around us, the evidence of your love for your creation. Help us to see what you are creating, I believe, in many places, opportunity. Opportunity for people to serve. Opportunity and hunger for people to hear the good news. Opportunity for people to be connected with you so that they have and understand a future and a hope. We pray, Lord, that by the power of your mastery over all of creation that you would bring the rains and the cooler temperatures that will put out the literal fires. We pray for the spirit of peace, wisdom, and understanding to rest with those who are disruptive and damaging, who are rioting, looting, vandalizing. We pray, Lord, that there would be a resurgence through your spirit of respect where people can respect one another despite the differences that exist. We pray for your healing for the many who need to be touched by the great physician in body, mind, and spirit, that they might experience wholeness and that they might know that regardless of where they are in the journey and whether the journey leads them closer to that day when they will be with you face to face, 
that you are with them, that your promise that we read of in so many places in the scripture, your promise in 23rd Psalm, for thou art with me, your promise at the end of Matthew, remember, I am with you always to the close of the age. Give us the faith to believe your presence is leading into a future that connects us with you as Lord and Savior. Now, Lord, we would ask that you would remember us in your kingdom and teach us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen.
that as our prayer, just like Jesus prayed before us, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for the word that we heard this morning on what it means to invest in our spiritual well-being, our spiritual health. And I pray that as we go into this week that uh, we would take much, uh, much of our time and energy and focus it into our relationship with you and that our relationships with others would benefit as a result of that. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for this online medium by which to do this. And we thank you for your love and your grace for us. For it's in the name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of today's service and for allow, allowing us to come into your home as we've started a new series looking at oikonomics, how you can use the gifts and the treasures that God has given to you to form a faith-filled home. In today's message, Pastor Eric shared with us about how we can use the spiritual capital that God has given to us and how we can grow it. Spiritual capital begins with turning away from anything else and turning toward God in an act of repentance. And then it grows as we uh, expand and grow our ability to trust in Jesus. Spiritual capital is wisdom and power. And when it comes to maturity, we are like a house that is built on the rock, that is able to weather whatever storms might come its way. As you go throughout this week, we hope that you'll follow the study guide that accompanies the Oikonomics series and uh, the one specifically put together for this week about growing spiritual capital. As you go through the week, you'll reflect on the, what you have as spiritual capital and how you can both grow that spiritual capital by using the other capitals and how you can use your spiritual capital to grow the other capitals. Um, all of these with the goal toward um, expanding your household's uh, ability to love and to follow and grow as followers of Jesus. For some of you, you've been followers of Jesus for a while and uh, you're uh, moving right along in your life of faith. Others of you might wonder what it even means to have spiritual capital. What does it mean to turn toward Jesus? And wherever you're at, we would love to walk with you along that journey. So please reach out to us. You can email us or give us a call at the church office. We'd love to hear from you. As you go through this week, I would like to offer now this blessing. May the love of God, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and may the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and your household. Amen.